Well, hey there and good day, all of you crazy guitar players. We're still doing the beginner series. Um, so far, I'm going to have to stop trying to recap because I'm going to forget everything. Uh, we, you know, we covered pull-offs, uh, power chords, G, C, and D chords, added E minor. What else do we add? Lil Ben, Lil Ben, some palm mute, alternate picking, huh? downward picking. Now, hopefully you've been working on these things. Today, I want to cover, we're going to cover the entire G major scale. And I don't mean the whole scale across the fretboard. That's not what I'm talking about. We will get there. We do need to fill in the fretboard. But first, before you can become the lead guitarist shredding around the fretboard, you kind of have to learn the rhythm, kind of how it all works. So that's, that's why I mean by covering the G major scale. And what do I mean? What are we covering it with? We're covering it with chords. So we've got G, C, D, E minor. That's four chords, seven notes in the scale. We're close. We've got three more to go, right? Um, now the G chord, that would be called your one chord. Why? Because G is the root of G major scale. C is your four chord. Why? Because it's a fourth one, two, three, four, up from the root, D is your five chord. Why? One, two, three, four, five. You probably already figured that out. E, that's your six chord. How, but how do you figure all that out, right? Again, just count your scale positions like we just talked about. And then you know what you got. Well, so we've got G. We've got C, we've got D, we've got E. We got those covered. Those are the roots of those chords across this scale. We haven't covered this guy, A, or B. Not yet. We haven't covered F sharp either. You're not gonna like F sharp. F sharp's naughty. This one's no fun. But for now, we got G, C, D, E. Now we're gonna add A. My guitar this thing, I could tune it 7,000 times, I strum a chord, it's out of tune. I know it's not horrible, some of you may not even be able to hear it, I can hear it. Anyhow, A minor chord, A, that string is open, zero, we're not hitting the E string on this one at all, A, now we're going to go two, two, one, open again. So on the D and G strings, we're holding two and two, middle ring, and one on that there B string, and then open on the E, okay? It's a nice chord. A minor chord's very common. Flashbacks. Anyhow. So now, we went G, we got A. A is there, we got an A there. What do we do? I'm gonna teach you how to take that E minor shape that we learned in the last video, that kind of simple shape. We're gonna make what's called a bar chord. Bar meaning this finger acts like the nut, right? At that nut, those are all zeros. Well now if you move that finger there, that becomes zero in a way. Okay, not an awesome chord. It is actually a chord though, it blows my mind. Anyhow, so we're gonna take that E minor shape and we're gonna make it up here now for an A minor. Okay, you got all those barred. Now you need your ring on the seventh fret, pinky on the seventh fret of the D string. So A and D strings, seventh fret, everything else, fifth fret. You can do it this way too. Instead of using your pinky and ring, you can use your middle and ring. Okay. Now, the reason we covered this bar chord is because the other chord we need to fill this thing in with is a B minor chord. Okay. So you can take that shape, move it up there, B, the third third scale point here, third position of the scale. So now, 
if you were to play these chords. Okay. C is there. There's a D there, and we've been doing this this whole time, right? Well, I think you're ready to learn what we can do with that D. And it's that. Okay. Now this is derived from this chord. We're not going to talk about that chord though. Why? It's not in G major. So we're going to learn it here. We're not going to learn it open first. We're going to learn it barred. So you're going to bar only the fifth, remember, six, five, four, three, two, one, as far as strings go, the fifth string on up. We're not going to do anything on that low E. So you got the fifth fret, Seven, 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 five. Barn at the fifth. Get a little better look. And you're stacking all your fingers on that seven. Seven, seven, seven on the D, G, and B strings. Now you've got a barred major chord there. Okay? I don't want to throw too many chords at you. We barred this guy, barred this guy. They're the same shape, thank God. Right? Now you're barring this guy. Now, that thing is movable. You can bring it back to C. So now you've got two C chords. Only if you hit it right, though. If you do that, it's not a C chord. Well, it is, but anyhow. So now, now that you have those bar chords, you can kind of ignore me and my G major scale stuff, and you can play those anywhere till your ear is happy. Find stuff that you like. Do I still want you to play in that key? Absolutely, a bunch. Because learning a key gets your ear in tune to like what kind of song sounds good, but it also helps to just free play and find things that you're like, you know what, I like the sound of that too. I wanna throw in one more bar chord for ease, really, because we, uh, you know, we've got our E down here, right? But E happens right there, too. One, two, three, four, five, six. The E is the sixth chord. So what we're going to do is bar an E minor up here at the seventh fret. Okay. What do we got going on? Bar at seven, like I said. Now on the D and the G, we're on nine. These get like pretty compact, so it's hard to see what I'm doing. So it's best if I tell you and then you can kind of use the visual to put it all together better. But the D and G are on nine. And now on the B string, you're hitting this eight. And then your bar is still back here on the seven and you get this. take this thing remember this finger acts as the nut slide all the way back to the nut now you've got a minor you're just taking the a minor shape and moving it around okay now so what do we got there we've got in the g scale you got g a b c d e F sharp, G, remember I said that F sharp chord's naughty. We will get to it. I don't know if I want to cover it today. It's a diminished chord, and right now I just don't. The thing comes with more complications than good times. So let's stick to the good times. But it's important to know that any time you're in a major key, and this, this stays solid even as you move through the modes, these things only change in position according to where you moved your root. So it's very important that you know that in a major key, the one chord is major, the four chord is major, and the five chord is major. The two chord, three chord, and six chords are all minor chords. That's how major keys work, all of them. So if you were to move all of this up to A, you're still gonna have that same 
I didn't teach you this bar, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So this is my, you, you know, your G is this. And uh, you know what, I'm just gonna explain it. So these three fingers do exactly what they did with the A minor chord, only down a string, and now you're barring with the E. So if you're at the fifth fret, bar in the fifth, okay? Five on the low E string, seven on the A and the D, seven on A and D, six on the G, and then five on the B and the E. That's a major bar chord starting from the six. So the major bar chord starting from five is that one I showed you earlier. Okay, so those chord qualities I just talked about. If you move up a step, now you're an A. Okay, we were playing in G, then I was just playing in A all because of those exact same things. I didn't change anything. I played all the exact same stuff I would have back in G, only I just moved everything up two frets. So it really can be that simple once you know these bar chords and understand how that scale works and what chord qualities happen at each point in that scale. It's that simple. You just take that same thing, move it around, and then someday maybe you buy a capo and you put the Let's say you want to treat A like it's G, so you would capo here, up a whole step. And all of a sudden, like that doesn't work that well right now. Put a capo there. I'll fake it. Put a capo there. There you go. Now you're back to them shapes. The open shapes. It's, it's important to point that out real quick, too. These are what's called open chord shapes, because you're using quite a bit of open notes with them. And then these guys are barred. Okay. So anyhow, uh, I feel like that's a lot of information in this video. Some of it's going to be confusing the fingerings part. Memorizing the fingerings is going to take a while. Definitely practice that a lot. You know, that's you, you just learned four new shapes of bar chords. You know, because from the fifth fret, you got your major and you got your minor. From the sixth fret, you got your major and you got your minor. That's a lot to remember. They're hard to move around. Bar chords are really hard to be slinging around, but you'll get used to it. You'll get good at it. I guarantee you'll get good at it. I got faith in you. So you're doing awesome. Have a good day.